All right. Good afternoon, Mike. It's good to see you again. I think we're, we've, we've done through our sale trim, all sorts of other things, but I think it's time to get in some rules. Uh, we Everyone loves the rules. So Common Scenario, it's the place where the boats are coming together, the starting line. Um, can you explain to me how I claim this hole that somebody else wants um, on this little tiny starting line that we've got here? Let's walk through some rule scenarios. Yeah. So uh, suppose you and I are going approaching the starting line and, and you're Dave here on, on starboard and I'm coming here on port and uh, what, I'm, what are the rules that I have to abide by, right? So uh, I, I wrote down the, the rules here just so we could all talk about them. I'd like to quickly point out that, you know, in the right of way rules, when boats meet, there's section A, B, and C, and there's really not that many rules. Like the rule book's pretty thick, but this little section, there's not that many words and um, really, you're going to find, though, that when boats meet in these section A, B, and C, we use, during the start, we use pretty much all of them. So uh, so we use three of them right away when we're coming up here on port. So if I'm coming up here on port, I am, you know, it's just port starboard, rule 10, port gives way to starboard, right? And then when we're tacking, the boat that's tacking rule 13 has no rights. So once again, give way boat. So I'm still give way boat. And by the way, just for a definition here, you start your tack when you, as soon as you cross head to wind, and then when you're on close salt course. So if you never finish your tack, you're still tacking and you have no rights. So I got to make sure I finish my tack. And by the way, that doesn't mean I have to have my sail in and trim. I just got to be on the close salt course. And there's some, you know, some judgment there and what really is close all of course, but you kind of get the idea. Then finally, I have gaining rate of way. Acquiring rate of way is rule 15. And once I acquire it, I can't just immediately finish my tack and bang into these guys, right? I got to give you uh, some room and time to keep clear here. And what that means in a practical sense is you know, I can't do it so close that if you try to turn to get out of my way, you hit me, there's no way out. But on the other hand, it doesn't take very long. You know, if it's just a few seconds, you know, that's on me. Once you get three, four, five seconds, that's on you. So those are the rules that apply to start with. Now, the interesting thing is now I am the right of way boat and you're the giveaway boat after those three rules pass. Okay. So that's the first scenario. Would you like me to continue on? Let's see. Yeah. Let, let, let's hear what else you got to add. All right. Well, suppose instead I'm coming from behind. So now I'm coming from behind. I'm, I'm clear as stern. So I am, uh, this boat is clear ahead. You're clear ahead. That's rule 12. So I have no rights. I can't just run in the stern of you uh, when we're on the same tack, which is the case before the start. The next thing that happens is I get room. I get no, I, I get overlap with you to lured. And now it is when we're lured, rule 11. And once I get here, it really is no different than finishing my tack. You know, I have to make sure I leave enough time for you to keep room and time to keep clear, which is rule 15. I can't just go boom here and then you can't turn. And when you immediately turn, you hit me, that doesn't work. But once again, it's, you know, if you wait a couple seconds, it's probably me on me. If we touch three, four five seconds, it's on you. And that's uh, that's important. So I think for your defense here, whether I'm tacking in, and gaining this right of way, once I gain the right of way, or if I come from behind, you need to try to get out of here as quickly as possible. Like as soon as the overlap comes, if you're going to hit anyway, you want to hit right away. So you want to, you're not trying to hit them. That's also another rule. You don't want to, you know, avoid contact as 14. But if you want to try to, as your hardest to get out of the way right away, because as soon as a few seconds go by, the onus starts to change to you in a practical sense. There is one other thought here is uh, rule 17 is when you gain the lured overlap from behind, if you're on a free leg of the course, 
If you gain it from behind, you can't go above your proper course. So before the start, there is no proper course. So I can come in from behind you as long as I give you a little time to get out of the way. I can just get you right head to wind if I want. And then once the gun goes, then because I gained it from behind, now we're racing, there is a proper course, I can't continue to head you up. But that's probably not gonna happen anyway. You know, I wanna get racing, right? So, but it is a rule. Um, that is not the case when you're tacking in. Rule 17 is not being, is not formed by tacking, it's from coming from behind. So. I can still head you up, and then if I chose to, I could keep you head to win. I don't know why I would do that unless I was match racing you for the last race or something, but that's the way it goes. So those are the subtle differences between those two scenarios. Mm. One, it, let's go back to real quick. You're saying when, when you're the weather boat, the, the red boat, um, yeah. and as you mentioned, there is this sort of tendency to sort of like it's this slow motion train wreck again that happens a lot where it's you know, the, you, the hook is there and you're kind of drifting side by side. And then somebody finally tells you to head up and you, you know, you push till over and there's contact. And I think that that is a key point though, right? Is, is it sort of like to just vocalize to, to, to the boat that comes to lure that, you know, you're, you're pushing the helm over and, you know, right. at, at the moment that there's contact um, to let them know. And then what? Well, I mean, you're absolutely right. There's, there's, um, you know, I'm, doing this all without saying a word, you know, like mm -hmm. if I'm this windward boat and, and you come in, you know, if you're the windward boat and I come in right behind you, you better be telling me, you know, I, I, I have no room to move here. My home's over. I can't do anything else. And then I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, you're kind of establishing the fact that you're doing everything you can to keep clear. Essentially that's what you need to say. I am doing everything I can to avoid you right now. If you do anything else, any closer, and then you're following me is what you're saying. So the verbalizing that I think, not only helps your case in the protest room, but it, it lets this person know that, um, that, that they can't just keep going. And, and a lot of times this boat, the reason they got an rod from behind is you're probably going high and slow because you're a little close, you're killing time. This guy's coming ripping in. They have a lot more maneuverability than you. They could just hit you if they wanted to. Often the same with uh, tacking in. So. Mm. So from a, uh, uh, an offensive point of view on, on the lure boat, is there, is there a good time to, to actually start turning up? I mean, once you sort of feel like, you know, your bow is uh, midships or something, you know what I mean? There, you know, where there's a comfortable space and time where you can really start turning. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of it is where you position early. If you position yourself so tightly, you really put yourself in a, in a weak spot because, um, and then, if you, but well, I think you, you got to use your momentum to sort of wait out that three, four or five seconds with plenty of space. And they've had plenty of time to realize that you could come up. And I think that's your, your, how you make your case. And I've even, you know, count here sometimes. I'm like, Hey, if I got an overlap, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, four, 1,000, five, 1,000. I got a pretty good case then. Okay. So here's another scenario. Then let's, you know, it, it's common where we're looking for these sharks coming and hunting and trying to find our holes and, and you do the big kind of turn sideways turn, uh, where you're parallel to the line, um, yeah. as a boat. You're talking is, about the, this is you, Dave on starboard, right. Trying mm -hmm. to protect your hole. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so let's, let's, let's yeah. yeah, let's look at it both ways from, you know, where you, you sort of being more, uh, proactive about trying to plug the hole, um, with the turn down. And so, when that's happening, both the boat coming in on port and also from um, to lure, what would be some considerations? Yeah, so the consideration here is, um, you know, even though starboard has right of way and port has no right of way when they're on port, when they're tacking, and then they initially have to, you know, acquiring right of way, there's there's three rules against them. And the the only limitation that starboard has here is they can't change your course. So rule 16, can't change your course in a way that this person can't keep clear. So you can't, you can't just wait until I'm right here and then go bam, right? Like there's no way out. So a couple thoughts on that is you can bear off as much as you want. And, and I always suggest, you know, no matter where this boat is, you, you're pointing right at their bow. That's the worst scenario. You know, we talked about that before where, you know, essentially, 
this person, all of a sudden you're, you're converging quickly and have to attack early or decide to go to Leward. And what I can't, the only thing that you can do as a starboard boat is then continually change course in a way that this boat can't keep clear. So that's the important thing there. I'm not sure that answered your question though. What's the, uh, what's your thought? What's the rest of your yeah, question? That's about right. And also, you know, um, it, when you're coming in from, from behind it lured, you know, where you may just see that. Um, and so that point of um, when the overlap is established and, and you're pushing the tiller over to, to show you, you've sort of, um, you've got a long way to turn and that all of a sudden creates some different space between the two boats. I think often the problem with this, this guy coming from behind and trying to take you is that it's hard to see, right? Like you're here, you look back, you don't see any problems and they, and they're reaching, you're going quarter speed or something. They're going full speed and they come very quickly. So one thought is I look back here quite often. If you're in a multi-person boat, somebody, somebody's assigned to that. So you, you can't be caught off guard. If they're already here going four times as fast as you, you're doomed. But as soon as you see that they might be doing that, you have to do the same thing you did when you're protecting the hole from the port tacker. The reason I added these boats in is you're trying to like occupy the space and occupy with your boom too. Mm -hmm. And all that's legal. Uh, as long as you don't, yeah, as your right away boat, you don't do it in such a way that this boat can't keep clear. Like you can't just all of a sudden let your main out and do that. You know, you know, as soon as they're overlapped though, you got to start keeping clear. Um, you know, your goal here is trying to get them to not like this hole and either go here or go past it. Um, you know, the worst scenario is if they still come in here and now you're all jammed up here, but with your boom out, they got to go pretty far around and they got another problem with the boat there. So hopefully you use your momentum to go drift up a little bit. Okay. We're going to take it next level. Let's, let's sort of jam the boats up together. The yellow one there and uh, let's put the yellow and red closer together. You're both kind of hanging there waiting. Um, and the uh, lure boat comes in and sets up properly and takes you head to win. Um, what is the passive responsibility to the yellow boat? Yeah. So, I mean, really the yellow boat could care less that, you know, as rules wise doesn't affect them that green is here. Uh, but the fact that red is heading up to avoid them is does totally matter. So everybody's lured here, right? Like, so this person has rights over this one, has rights over this one, has rights over this one. And so it just goes down the line, but it doesn't really go down the line. You're not hitting up yellow when you do this, you're hitting up green. And if they head up enough, red has to head up. And then, so yeah, kind of, kind of goes down the chain. And if you need to protest, you're going to, how far down the line do you go to find the culprit? <laughs> well, I think you, you really, so and it could, one of the good things about the rules is it, it almost doesn't matter how you get in the room. If you protest red, cause they did something wrong or maybe yellow protests red or, or whatever it is, but really somehow this was caused by green tacking too close and jamming them up. And somehow that translates down the line in theory, once you're in the room, even if this person wasn't protested and they weren't even listed on the protest forum, they're like, hey, there was a third boat in here. We got to get in here. A buddy of mine uh, went in as a witness one time and they ended up throwing him out. So <laughs> it happens. He was pretty mad, but the protest committee was right. He had caused an outside room problem and it really was his fault and he didn't even realize it and got in the room and they all figured it out. Now you go. Yeah. All right. So any other, I mean, it was some subtleties and some other common scenarios that, that uh, we, yeah. So at. another one, let's go back to this. Um, you know, I think the other subtlety is when you're kind of stacked up and there's other boats involved, right? So, you know, you're never by yourself, but suppose you have an overlap here. A couple of questions you can have. One is um, green wants to tack. Can you call room to tack on, on yellow? And the other question is, if green decides to go like this, do they have to let yellow in? And um, so the answer is sort of yes in both scenarios. You can, uh, but you got to be close haul. So close haul boat, then you can, if you're reaching along, you cannot ask for room to tack. And now we're into the marks and obstructions, rules 19. So it's considered an obstruction. And 
but not if you're on a, if you're just reaching around. So if you want to ask for room to tack, you better be close hauled. And you know, things happen fast. You know, this is one of those things that you better ask for it early. I'm going to need room to tack. And then yellow's response has to either to be attack immediately or answer you tack. One of the very few hails in the rule book. There's very few of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, this is one of those scenarios. So then they come here and then, you know, I, if I was yellow, I'd probably say you tack. And then I could really, you know, it's not a good situation for green then because green, yellow is going to lay right up underneath them mm -hmm. and uh, put them in a bad spot. So the second scenario we talked about was where green's like, oh, I'm, I decided to go below this guy. And, you know, the answer is that they just have to let them in. And yellow does not have to hail, you know, doesn't have to say, hey, I got room to go duck. They don't, that's, not an, that's not a required hail. Uh, by the way, it, it's pretty smart of them, though. <laughs> you know, they may not recognize them there. You don't want to be wiped off. You can't, just because it's not necessary doesn't mean you don't, you don't do so. True. Okay. Um, so... Let me let me so let's try to boil it down to somebody that maybe that's new to the sport and just in in the, the real basic principles of just owning a hole and preserving it um, in this sort of right away point of view. You know, I, I think this is where I you know the, the rules. I don't. I'm not a rule monger on the course, but I, I do like to play a fair game, and we're all playing on the same rules. And this this before the start, there's so many interactions that I, I think the answer is, you know, if you're new to the sport and you're boiling this down, you got to know a couple basic rules. There's just no way around it. You got to know if you're on port, you're give way. You got to know while you're tacking, you give way. You got to know that you got to finish the tack. And you got to know that if you fire right away and immediately hit somebody or they can't avoid you, that doesn't work. And then you have to know that if you're coming from behind, you can't just run into them. You're clear ahead. Um, the, what the clear head is rules. And then you have to know that your lured boat here, now you have rights, you can do whatever you want. Assuming you don't do it so fast that they can't get out of the way. And I think if you know those basic things, that's going to give you most of the scenarios. Um, I would say that, you know, if you're new to, newer to the sport, not the worst thing, to, you know, spend a little more time set up just a little earlier because you're the right of way boat. If you're a little intimidated by the rules, get a little more used to it and let the other people come in. And, um, and, and, you know, this is your spot. You own it. You have rights. So don't be intimidated. Good point. Yeah. Get played safe. Be the marshmallow, at least for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but don't be the marshmallow in a way that, you know, this is my favorite scenario when somebody just, you know, Dave, if you're here going high and slow and you do nothing to defend it, you're the sitting duck and I can just take advantage of these rules. Even though I have all these rules against me, it's really the stronger position of the two for the boat tacking in. So if they do this well and I'm just don't do anything to defend, it's pretty easy for them to put me in a terrible spot off the start. I don't want to be like this at the start. Uh, that's not going to end well for me. Uh, so, you know, don't be afraid to use these rights and practice this bear off and head up and make sure you really use this, you know, acquiring right, using your port starboard rule 10, the very first one in the right of ways to your advantage. Good point. And then be a good, good sync with your trimmers to make sure that your uh, sales are doing what they're supposed to be doing through all this. Absolutely. How you control your boat here. You know, this is definitely something you can practice, practice, you know, this bear off, try to let your sails out, make sure your jibs out. So it's not, um, you know, and use words that, that make sense to the team, you know, pivot down, everybody knows the sails out, you know, accelerate, everybody brings it in, you know, quarter speed, you gotta let people know what's going on. Um, worth saying one other thing, which is that, uh, you know, Mark room rule 18, doesn't apply at the start. So in practical sense, you know, you can tack in late in the three ball lane zone because there is no zone around the, the pin if you're, if you're green. So as long as you finish your tack in time, you're fine. 
if you can squeeze around this mark then anyhow you can do it and you can make it you're fine even though there's no mark room you're using your lured advantage to do that so it's not mark room that's allowing you to do that it's the fact that you're lured so that's an interesting one and then the same is true sort of at the other end you have you know you have your race committee here and if if you're this used to be they used to call this barging back in the day and you know, essentially, you can't just cram your way in here. So I, you know, if I'm green, I can really hold high. And once again, communications here, huge here. Don't go in there. No room for you. Even though it's not mark room, I can pinch you out. And because you could be overlapped for right at the three bolt lane zone, because there's no like three bolt lane zone, you can't go in there. Now, the one exception to that is if you're already in there, I can't just come up and head you into the race committee vote, which makes sense. So once you're established in there, you're okay. And they got to give you a little bit of room here. Excellent. A lot of subtleties, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the, the, the good tip was always to just that final starboard approach, just go to the inside left corner of the race committee, but you should be safe. Yeah. And so, yeah. Right. Once you're kind of here, not in bad shape at all. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so real exactly. quick, one final thing, because uh, this happened recently. I think I, we saw it at uh, the Heli Hansel Regatta in St. Pete not too long ago, where a boat shooting the pin, you know, maybe, you know, doesn't mean to go past Edwin and sort of kind of sort of attack, but not really, you know, one of those things that <laughs> well, let's uh, what's the situation there where, you know, you got a guy trying to really shoot it and, and sort of does tack or what defines the tack there? So, you know, but let's go kind of back to this scenario that we talked about before in that the lured boat has the rights. And so they're lured, lured, lured. And then just like we talked about before when you're tacking, so rule 13 tacking, you start your tack as soon as you pass head to wind. So you can go literally head to wind. And if you could drift over the line and make it and get going, you're okay. You're probably not going to be in great shape. There's probably people going to be rolling over here because you're going slow, but at least you made it over the pin. But if you take it the next step and then all of a sudden you just get past head to win, you have no rights. Now you're tacking. And even if you finish it, you're on poor. This is not good. <laughs> so you don't want to be, you don't want to go past head to win if you're this person. Just kind of squeeze around. And so I think that kind of answers your question, right? Yes, exactly. So that's exactly how it played out. So yeah, that's exactly how it plays out. And mm. it wasn't you, I promise. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it was great regatta though, huh? We had wind all three days. Got lots of races in. Good party. Good sailing. Good parties. What? That's that's all we needed to that's you know right. to rest, restart this new season. So, all right, yeah. cool. Any other thoughts on? I know we, rules can could go on scenarios and iterations and things, but I think we we got them all. Is there any other? Thing no, and I and I think if you look at the right away rules, there aren't that many of them. We covered them all. Port starboard, we're lured, clear ahead, tacking. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is that you're supposed to avoid contact, but that's always true. So that does, that applies at the starts. Quite right away, we first talked about quite a bit. The limits on the right of way boat on changing your course. And then rule 17, if you acquire from behind, how it's slightly different than if you acquire by tacking or from somebody who overlaps you from above. Cool. All right. Well, I really, think and then the marks we talked about too. The rule 18 doesn't apply. But then there is some, just the attacking obstruction. Starboard boat could be an obstruction if you're close hauled. All right. And presuming it all goes well and, and you've got a good clean start, you defended your hole and then, you know, you're launched and you don't have to worry about any more rules because you're far ahead of everybody, right? Yeah, there's a lot less. That's for sure. You know, <laughs> there's, there's so many to, that apply here. Yeah. You know, less the traffic, last, less one last thing is, you know, if you're new to sailing too, in, in theory, you know, you're the right away boat, right? If you're starboard and you got this line of port tack boats come and this just happens all day long. And yeah, for the most part, we kind of have this system where you do, everybody does this loop where the port tackers are often below the starboard tackers, but you know, it's not always like that. And the starboard tackers, unless you're match racing somebody, everybody kind of gives a little, like, it's not like all of a sudden you just, you know, you got really close to somebody and this guy's had to duck you a little bit and they're like protest, you know, I think there's a lot of forgiveness in going back and forth. And I think there should be because everybody's just trying to get in line somewhere, mm. but there's not a lot of forgiveness. Once you get here, <laughs> once you're setting up, you know, if somebody cheats a little bit and 
you know, never finish their attack or something. Well, that's just not fair, right? That's they're getting an advantage by being able to drift up to you when they didn't have to finish their attack. So I think expect a lot of forgiveness going back and forth and don't, don't expect a lot of forgiveness in that final approach. Okay. Excellent. I feel like um, I'm ready to go battle it out in the starting line here. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for the insight as always, Mike. We'll catch you next week. All right. See you, Dave. Okay. Cheers.